Hey everyone, welcome to Lost Lens Caps, the photography podcast where we talk all things photography. My name is Jacob Rice and I'm your host. Today I have here Tyler Coe. Tyler Coe is a photographer here at Iowa State University. He's also a graphic design student and he's now starting a position with Cyclones TV, the athletics department here at Iowa State. Tyler, how are you doing? I'm good. How about yourself? Uh, I'm doing all right. A little financially uh, down bad right now. Aren't we all? I know. Bro college we're, we're photographers and we... Yeah. Stuff happens with vehicles. <laughs> Photographers are not known for being the most rich people in the world. No, definitely not. So, this is called Lost Lens Caps, the photography podcast here at Iowa State. I have not lost any lens caps, though. You have not? No. Oh my, I've lost so many. Like, at least six or seven. Be better. Yeah. I had to buy a pack of, like, eight to replace a bunch, and they're, like, all off-color, off-brand. They mm-hmm. just say Sony email, but they're, like, janky as hell, and they're black, uh. and they don't match the originals. Yes. Yeah. I've lost a couple at Cyclones TV as well. Not ideal. Yeah. So, can you give me a little bit of information about you? Who are you? What do you do? What's your hopes, dreams, fears? Anything? Uh, well, like you said, I'm a graphic design major. I'm going to be going into my junior year at Iowa State. Um, I don't know. I like to take photos of sports, and um, I like to bring my camera with me anywhere I go. Um, just... Found a passion for sports and photography, just going through social media and just stuff like that. And I love what I do. Um, what sports did you originally shoot that like made you fall in love with sports photography? Um, I mean, I just went to a lot of sports growing up and I just think it's cool to get involved in sports in a different way other than being a fan. And it's just cool to produce content. Nice. So um, what's your favorite sports shoot? Huh. It might be seasonal, but it's hard not to say football just because of how big it is and it's exciting. And although Iowa State wasn't that good this year, it was still really fun because I got to travel to some really cool places. Yeah, tell me about that. So where'd you travel to for football? Um, I went to the Texas game in Austin, and that was quite the experience because there were it's the biggest stadium I've been to. It holds about 100,000 people. And um, it was one of the hottest days of the year that I've been a part of. It was like 95 degrees and the turf was sticking to my legs <laughs> and like I was pitting out and like I had to catch a flight right after too. So it was not ideal, but got some really good shots there and it was fun. And the Texas, whenever I'd walk in front of like the student section, uh, Texas fans would talk shit to me. So it was fun. Yeah, that's kind of par for the course when it comes to sports photography. I remember when we uh, traveled to the University of Kansas for the football game out there, um, I got like assaulted a little bit out there. <laughs> People yep. were throwing beer cans at us. Yep. Um, same thing happened at the Seahawk game. They had like a pyramid of uh, beer cans and they would drop a, drop the pyramid over the media section whenever an Iowa State person would come through there. Yeah. I actually used to be a University of Iowa fan before I came here to Iowa State. I know. I'm, I'm ashamed. But yeah. I'm on the light side now. I was previously on the dark side. Yeah, we, we don't like Iowa over here. Yeah. Speaking of Iowa, have you shot any Cyhawk series stuff? Um, I shot volleyball and softball, but none of, like no basketball or football yet. But mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to the football game on September 9th this year. It's at home, so yeah. that'll, be, that'll be really fun. First big Cyhawk game for me. True. The last time... Uh, Cyhawk game was in Ames. We lost by like, what, two points? 27-17, I think. 27. Ooh, never mind. Bigger than I thought. But yeah, um, last time they were here in Ames, Brock Purdy was still here. and Brees Hall. Brees Hall. Kohler, Chase Allen. All of them. We only got seven wins that year. But yeah. Um, yeah, this year you shot volleyball and softball. So like, what was that like shooting here in, in Ames for Cyhawk and then over in uh, Iowa City for softball? Um, it's pretty similar environments from, cause I shot softball last year and this year and, um, pretty similar environments. Um, Iowa state has had Iowa's number recently, so that's always added to the fun. But at Iowa, um, they had an interesting setup where you could go on the roof of the press box to like take photos. And I got some really cool shots of like the pitcher and the shadows were good then and caught a home run up there too. So it was Really cool to go there. Yeah. Were you the only like Iowa State person up there or was there more out there? Um, there was another um, Iowa State photographer up there when I was up there, but an, an Iowa photographer was up there too. He kind of showed us the way up there, but yeah. 
Nice. Yeah, the University of Iowa, like, directors of photography and assistant directors of photography for uh, an athletics program at there, they're really nice. Yeah. You follow them on Instagram, right? Yep. Yeah, their stuff's crazy. That's definitely, like, a dream job of mine to, like, be director of photography for an athletics program mm-hmm. at some point. I think that would be pretty dope. It I would mean, be. that's kind of my pinnacle of, like, career. What are you thinking about for your future career in sports photography if you want to pursue that? Um, I mean... I'd like to work for like a, like in a big city like Chicago, I cover like all the sports, like, so I'd cover like the Bears, the Cubs, Blackhawks, all of them. And, um, like just something like that. But if that's not possible, just working for a specific team, like the Cubs or whatever, um, and like kind of being the main photographer for them and yeah. So you're a graphic design student here at Iowa State. Um, is graphic design what you want to pursue? Or are you thinking more like you were saying, like photography or a mix of both? Or what are you thinking? Um, ideally a mix of both, but if I had to choose one, it'd definitely be photography because yeah. it's just, I like it more and I have more fun doing photography. It's easier for me to like, like you kind of have to be more creative, I guess, like with graphic design. I don't know, but yeah, I was, I was previously in the graphic design program my freshman year and then I switched to journalism just because I fell in love with like the uh, journalistic practices of like newspapers and stuff. But you're still in the design program. Yep. Um, how has the design program been with Iowa State? Like, what have you been doing this past um, years? Well, the first year was pretty rough. You experienced too, but the drawing mm-hmm. class was horrible. Like, I had no drawing experience, and it feels like I got worse at drawing. <laughs> but I passed. We got into the graphic design program, so it doesn't matter. But uh, the first year of the graphic design program was. It was pretty good. Um, just like just, I mean, this happens in every major where you have like questionable um, professors or like you don't, you think assignments are silly or just stuff like that. But overall, it was pretty good. I learned a lot. So yeah. Um, uh, tell me a little bit about like what you've been doing with your graphic design. Like you uh, worked with a football player too, maybe, or a basketball player as well. Uh. You like created some logos with them? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. So Jairel Brock, I created a logo for him. He specified what he wanted. He wanted his initials JB and then he wanted a sword in the middle to um, look like a cross too. So I just did that and I made it look like 3D and used Iowa State's colors and it ended up on some t-shirts. So it was pretty cool. Like first game, I just saw an old dude, probably like 80 walking around and he was wearing my logo. So I asked him to take a photo and I just thought that was pretty hilarious. Hey, that's awesome. And then for, um, Curtis Jones, he's a Buffalo transfer coming in for Iowa state. He, for basketball, he wanted a, he wanted it to be on a chain and he just wanted his initials and his number. And I struggled with this one, but I made it work out in the end and I'm excited to see what it looks like on the chain. Is it going to be like gold diamonds um or, you know? i think it'll be gold because i asked if he wanted like any colors and he just said black and white and they'll work work it out from there so that's awesome yeah um here at iowa state there's lots of opportunities when it comes to sports like yes. design or photo or video we've got like so many photographers and videographers and i feel like we know pretty much all of them now after yeah, being yeah. here for two years mm-hmm. there's just a fun bunch of people i feel like with the with the amount of people there is uh, it's like good to see like there's a lot of diversity with what they're doing. Like sure there's there's like the two main camps of like Iowa State Daily students and then like Cyclones TV students. And then outside of that we've got like all the design students who are doing photography stuff and like the fashion show and all that. And that's I think it's pretty cool. I think if you're wanting to come to Iowa State, plug for Iowa State. There's not a photography photography degree, but a lot of opportunities. A lot of opportunities, yes. Um we actually, even if you're not, if you, even if you haven't done any photography yet, Iowa State Daily is great for getting into that and we give a lot of good assignments and it's a good way to build. Plug for the Iowa State Daily. Plug. Hey, yo. But yeah, um, I came here originally, like I said, in design and then I, I don't even know. I knew I wanted to do some photography in my spare time with a design program and I, uh, I reached out to the, the visual editor at the time. And like the summer before my fall semester started for freshman year, I was covering like volleyball and stuff and totally fell in love with it. And then built some like good relationships with sports editors and like was able to do football and basketball. And I was in a crazy position where I was like the only photographer or one of two. So I got to do like everything for like the winter time. And then 
during spring, during track season, Colin and I, we both like reached out to you and like had you come in. And I actually, did you reach out to us? I was playing basketball at lead and we actually played Colin in a oh. three on three game. And then I came up to him after and just told him that I'm interested and I'd like to join. And hey. I was number three. Yeah. And then we, we picked you up at the, uh, my at first the assignment was, was it softball? I think it was softball. I think it was softball, and then we went to the Drake Relays. Yeah, the Drake Relays, the pinnacle of sports photography here <laughs> in Iowa. I mean, this last Drake Relays, we had like, God, it seemed like 50 photographers there in that little tiny media room. Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah. No room to put your bag or yeah, get up. Or... Overlapping with all everyone's cords. And they were out of vests, too. Yeah. We could only like rent the photography vests. For like an hour. Yeah, for an hour, and like... I mean, they didn't really enforce it that much. No, like you didn't have to shoot. Like people were going back to the media room, sitting in there for hours. Yeah, and they still had their vest on. Yeah. Do you have a specific like favorite photo from the Drake relays? Mm. Off the top of your head, there's one where um, a runner was rounding the going around the corner, and I was like positioned right in the middle, and I got my fifty one point two lens on, and I just got a really sharp one of him. Good blue clouds in the background, mm. and I mean, I had a lot of good ones I liked, but that yeah. one stands out to me. Shout out to Sony. We both shoot Sony. Yes, Sony gang. We, uh, we both got A7 threes, and they do the job. If they there's do. any like camera recommendations we have out there for people that are like first starting out with photography, A7 three is like it's the best. A, it's pretty affordable too. Yeah, right now it's like what sixteen hundred. I think so. Yeah, new it was like two thousand, but yeah, now that's it's a bit older now. It's like four or five years old. It's getting down there. Plus. B it's H. not like outdated either. Yeah, like it still does a really good job. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's like it's comparable to like the A9, but like it's it just doesn't have like the as good as it's a not as fast shutter. And yeah. it's not as fast. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's for sure like like the best recommendation I could give for you. Um, you actually switched from like an A6400 to the A7 III like before you started the daily, right? Uh, yeah, I got the A7 III the summer. Hmm. I got it like the fall of my freshman year and then I joined that spring, but I actually got the 70 to 180 lens like right before I joined you guys because oh, yeah. I knew it was good for sports and good lens to start off and it's mm -hmm. affordable like the a7 III too. So. And then um, during football season, you like, you dropped it, right? And like it like... Yeah, the yeah. first game I was walking down from the press box and apparently I didn't zip up my um, shoulder bag thing. And it fell off, and I could show them actually. But it's on the. Oh shit! That's it's right. on the camera right but, there. But <laughs> um, like it doesn't zoom properly. Like I have to hold the like end of the lens cap, and then twist it, and then it'll zoom fine. But once it goes back down to the seventy, it needs to needs fixed, I guess. But yeah, it still works. I don't. It doesn't need to be replaced. It's not urgent or anything, but it's just annoying. Mm -hmm. Not to do a 180 on Sony, but uh, Sony's are definitely not the most well built, or at least the older models and the third party lenses for it. Um, I've had some issues with my Sony, like the eye cups always break um, when you're like going around rough, like carrying on a bunch of stuff, running around stadiums and such. And then um, my uh, joystick on the A7 III mm -hmm. has come off a couple times. <laughs> Is that times. still off? Yeah, it still fell off. I think it's recording, right? Right on that camera. Does it still function? It still functions, but I got to get my nail in there to move uh, around. Yeah. So I, once we get to like a, a point where I'm not doing as much photography stuff, I, I'm gonna send it in and get it replaced because, uh, it's getting really annoying not having the joystick. But yeah, I mean, Nikon, Ooh. Fuji. Yeah, I mean they're built well, but like, they're Nikon. Not for, what we want. I mean, yeah, they're they're all right, I guess. But like, Sony's better for sports, at least. So, what cameras have you shot with? You've already mentioned that you shoot the A7 III currently, A6400. You previously were. Did you shoot anything before that? Um, I mean, those are when I got. I mean, I actually shared the A60. I think it was 6400, 61, maybe. I don't know, but I shared that with my dad at the time because that's like when I got into photography and. Once I knew I loved it, I upgraded the A7 III, and those are the only ones I've used, actually. Mm. I'm on a little bit of a different path. I, I started with Nikon. Gross. Um, it was like one of those like just kit cameras you get from Walmart, and it was like my mom's old camera. Probably like 100 or 200 bucks. Yeah, at most. With like just like the standard like 55 to like 180, like variable aperture 
uh, lens. F like four five. <laughs> yeah, to like five six or six point three or something. Um, and then I, I bought my own camera without doing any research. I bought a Canon just because I I thought Canon like looked cooler. <laughs> um, and it was That's like some- a T six I. Um, which is a great camera, um, for like what it's worth. It was a couple hundred bucks as well, but it just had like better focusing and it was faster. It was a little, a little bit newer as well. And that's what got me through all of high school or no, uh, sophomore and junior year of high school. And then I, I started stealing my mom's Canon 6D Mark II because it was a full frame. Like and I stealing? Like, like she didn't know? She didn't know. Oh. Well, she found out once and then she's like, you're never well, using my stuff look again. where you are now. I mean, If you didn't steal that, you never know. True. If I didn't steal her camera, maybe I wouldn't be doing photography. But yeah, I would do senior photos of like all my friends and that's how I like got into like uh, just like portraits and stuff. And then senior of high school, I, I bought an A7 III and then uh, actually no, my parents bought it for me and I had to pay them back. I was, it was like $2,000 That's happened a lot for me. Yeah. And then I, I started shooting sports at my high school. Basketball was the first thing I shot. And then that's when I fell in love with it. And then here we are. It's funny because basketball was like the first sport I shot too. Yeah. I remember seeing that on your Instagram. Yep. Yeah. Those photos are up now, but yeah, looking we, back we all start <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. We all start somewhere. I mean, my stuff, I, I used to make everything black and white cause I didn't know how to edit colors. <laughs> so I just put black and white and put contrast up to like a hundred and then I'd be like, yeah, uh. it's good. And now I'm like, I kind of shy away from black and white just cause I feel like sometimes it can just become a little You'll know when to use a black and white. Like, yeah. Based, like my wallpaper I have today. Yeah. There's like, a time and place for it. And sports photography, I used to be like so pretentious, like dad, you don't understand. I made it black and white. Cause like it's how I was feeling. I was like, well, I just made it black and white cause I didn't know how to do shit. Well, like with this photo, like it's the mood is like, they just lost on senior day on a heartbreaking day or a heartbreaking game. And mm-hmm. He's biting his jersey and last game in Hilton. It's it's fitting. Oh yeah, where are we by the way? In Ames at Landscape Architecture. <laughs> we're at the Iowa State Daily Office right now yes. filming this podcast. Um, we're currently actually in the photo room. Yeah, this is a new office and um, we just got it this past semester or past year. Uh, previously, we were in like I don't even know. We were just balancing like different rooms in uh the journal just a random room, room in hamilton like yeah classroom and uh before that we were at towers and um we were like completely off campus basically far away from everyone and before that we were in kingland which is like the super fancy building over on you know the main part Above of campus Freddy's. yeah and then before that we were we were back in hamilton so we've been all over the place in the past like six seven years the iowa state daily and now we finally have like a home here this place is good yeah we got Oh, shout out to Wendy Winterstein. She gave us an entire like new paint job for the entire building. Wendy's the president here at Iowa State. We love Wendy. Wendy's the goat. We're kind of loving it in here. Um, this place is definitely like a, a new home for us. And it's definitely helped with like recruiting people. And I think it just, you know, gives a cozy vibe here. For the it's a good place to hang out. Like if you're in between classes and yeah. chat, do homework, whatever. And this is the room where we have our uh, photo meetings where we like, don't really talk about photos. We kind of just talk about like random camera stuff. Yeah, we still got the Drake relays up there on the, on yeah, the whiteboard. Yeah, currently on the uh, the whiteboard of our <laughs> our schedule, we still have... Uh, yeah, I'm covering the Drake relays on the 27th. The yeah. Is this April? I think this is April, yeah. Yeah, it has to, it'd have to be. <laughs> we never filled out May, but yeah, I'm hoping that, um, you know, this will be a great place for our photographers in the future and, you know, reporters and everyone else here at The Daily to be, to call home, I guess, you know. We're going to take a quick 30-second break to thank our sponsor of today's podcast, Freddy's. Freddy's is a great place to go hang out with your friends, have a few shakes, you know, get some good burgers, fries. Don't forget the fry sauce. Funny enough, um, Freddy's is where Tyler and I eat, like, every time we hang out. After, after every meeting. Yeah, after every photo meeting here at The Daily, we'll go to Freddy's. Sometimes we'll bring, we'll bring friends sometimes, like Owen. Oh. Owen. Owen. Transferred to University of Iowa. What are you doing, my guy? But we love him. He's going to be doing great stuff with the Daily Iowan and stuff over there. So he will be missed. Yeah. So we're going to do a new segment called... What should it be called? What, what, what should it be called? What's, What's your, your favorite, favorite photo? photo? So we're going to be doing specifically basketball photos today. And we're going to be sharing some of our favorite photos from this past season of Iowa State basketball. Tyler, how about you go first? All right. So this first one, it's not so much, I mean, it's kind of the photo, but it's more of what happened. Um, So, of course, they're wearing the gold jerseys. 
But um, this is when Jazz Koontz, he was going for a loose ball and he jumped over all the media and landed on the table behind. And I just pointed my camera up and got it in focus somehow and just got him like climbing back over. And I think my favorite part of the uh, of the photo is the manager behind. He's like, ah, like just loving the effort. And I just think that's a, I love that one. Yeah, that photo definitely tells a story of like, you know, passion and it just gives like the context. Mm-hmm. Like, sure, you can't see the table that he's on or like what he's actually doing. But or you can kind of in the corner, you can kind of see the oh, fan yeah, like helping him. But yeah, but yeah, the the definitely the spotlight of that photo is the managers in the back being oh, yeah. hyped up. Um. So for one, also these are in no particular order. No. of our favorite. Well, place. I guess mine is kind of in order of like the season. Like yeah, ends and whatever. Uh, but. but yeah. So one of my favorite photos from this past basketball season is a photo of Jaron Holmes, uh, one of our forwards forward guard shooting guard i don't know anything about basketball uh this photo is about jaron holmes um one of our guards from this past season he was on here for one season because he was a transfer from Saint bonaventure yeah st bonaventure uh and within the photo it's him shooting for i think two and uh he's framed perfectly in a triangle in between rob jones and one of the north dakota players so it kind of creates a a unique framing of just his face as he's shooting, and I think it's just really cool. It was a happy accident because I was using an A9 and it has great tracking, and I just accidentally got the photo. I wasn't even intentionally trying to shoot between that. It was once in a lifetime kind of shot, I think. I say that as if this is like the best photo of all time. It's it's not. But yeah, <laughs> I think it's really interesting, and I just personally really like the photo. And his head's just perfectly right in the middle. I know, right? And uh, you can see the reactions of the, some of the North Dakota players in the corners. I think it's pretty cool. What's your next favorite photo? All right. So I got the opportunity. We both did the travel to Lawrence, Kansas at Allen Fieldhouse for the basketball game. Love that place. We better be going back. Oh, yeah. It's great environment. But um, this one is of Tame and Lipsy going down the lane and dunking it. Um, I really like this one because um, he never dunks. He's a freshman point guard. He's small. And I didn't expect it. And I got the shot. And um, it's cool because it's right in front of the bench and you can see some of the Kansas players watching um, Tame and just go right through them. And yeah, good framing too. And And for context, the players that are watching him are like seasoned players. And Jalen Wilson, number 10 in the photo. He's Big 12 player of the year. Big 12 he's player good. of the year. And you can see Tame and Lipsy just full confidence going for it, which I think perfectly describes Tame and Lipsy in this past season, you know, because he's... And- insane That's and Hassan one. Ward is getting ready to jump off the bench too in the bottom left corner so <laughs> yeah Allen Fieldhouse always produces great images there it's it's just a fun place to be especially with the the Wendy's they catered oh, except it was cold when I, yeah, I mean it, yeah but, it was kind of cold but, like, but we don't we don't cater anything for our basketball games yeah here at Iowa State we don't really cater any food for the media which well for like gymnastics they give us Papa John's true. pizza Papa John's pizza uh anyways on to the next photo of mine uh, that I think is one of my favorites. Uh, I think this is a... It's a photo that does not relate to actual, like, game. Uh, like, game action photos. It is a studio shot. It's a uh, studio-style shot from a, a stylized photo shoot I did with the men's basketball team um, before the season started. We went to, like, an old movie theater up in Story City. Uh, it's of Jaron Holmes again. I don't know why, but two of my favorite photos are of Jaron. He's... He's a photogenic. He's photogenic. Guy. Yeah. There's certain basketball players that are and are not. That's true. There's a lot of them that are just like uncomfortable in front of cameras. Yes. Jaron was not. So in this photo, I was using a 14 millimeter 1.8, which is an amazing lens. I got really close up to the ground, like at a really low angle. And I asked him to dribble the ball through his legs. And within the photo, we had a, uh, I think it was like an A, an 8060 like video light up in the back to simulate like a, a projector um, and that was like his hair light and then uh, on the uh, left side of him I had my my key light um, external light lighting him up and I think it just created like a really cool look because it was you know super dark on one side and bright on the other side and it just like gave a really I don't know like dynamic lighting situation and I just I like the colors the texture of like the tattoos on his leg and just the overall feeling of the photo I think is just I don't know edgy but like I don't know like cool, dark, mysterious. Um, but yeah, 
definitely would love to do more stylized I think those shoots. are my still my favorite photos that you've done yeah like, that, you could choose any of those as your favorites I think yeah this, those are insane I appreciate that the studio shoot was definitely or the stylized shoot we did the basketball team was like the only stylized shoot we did that year and it was amazing and I, I like the one where he's throwing it. the popcorn oh you too. Yeah. we'll throw that on one real quick yeah, yeah this one yeah. he's uh throwing the movie theater popcorn right at me uh definitely kind of screwed up the lens a little bit it got pretty greasy with popcorn butter worth it but yeah it was definitely worth it Sadly, they only posted like one time with these I photos. know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What's your next photo? Uh, my next one is of Gabe Kalsher, um during the Texas game. And we know why the Texas game was so significant. Yes, we do. But for anyone that doesn't know, Tyrese Hunter played at Iowa State last year as a freshman and basically transferred to Texas because he wanted more money. And he would have been a guaranteed starter on the team, would have had a really good year and at Texas, he did not have a great year and made everyone here happy. But, uh, yeah, this is of Gabe Kalisher. Um, Iowa State went on a run, and he's all pumped up going back to the sideline. He's like, ugh. And um, it was during a whiteout, too, so the crowd was wearing all white, and it just added to the picture, and it was really good. Yeah, I really wish we did more whiteouts with basketball. Like, we did a gold out this year as well. The gold out looked pretty good, Yeah, too. it looked cool, but the white out just produces way better mm-hmm. images because, like, in the background, you can see them all the way up to the top of the, you know, of the stands. And I it, I don't know. It just feels like it feels more, like, it creates more depth with yes, everything. Yes, yes. Plus, I mean, our white jerseys are our best jerseys, in my opinion. You can so. kind of see the radial, too, that it yeah. creates, too. I mean, and with the contrast of, like, the orange, oh, my gosh. Yes. Loved it. Yeah. Sadly, though, Texas did win the Big 12, which, meh. We were there. We we did go. We did yeah, photograph We were there that. for the men's basketball, Iowa State men's basketball team, um, covering them up in Kansas City, and we stayed for the uh, Big 12 championship game, and it was pretty interesting to cover that. We got everything in that weekend. That was a good weekend. Yeah, except we stayed in, like, the hood. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the sketchy house with the bad parking. With gunshots in the middle of the night. Yeah, that was just not a good place to stay, but you know, got to do what you got to do for the photo. With my 20 point turn in the backyard. God, thank God for those cameras on that SUV. Ugh, you that got nervous. I, I had it under control, out. though. <laughs> but yeah, okay, on to the next photo. All right, this photo I have here is of the 2021 to 2022 season. So not this past season, but a little further back. And it is from the Cyhawk game here in Ames. And the photo is of Isaiah Brockington, one of our star players from that year. He came here just for one year and absolutely so like exploded. He was amazing. Mid-range god. Yeah, he was a transfer from my Penn State. Penn State. Yeah, Penn State. And uh, in the photo, you can see, I think that's Keegan Thompson, maybe. I think that's mm-hmm. Keegan Murray. Keegan, yeah, Keegan, Mur- Keegan Murray. Keegan Murray, yeah. Keegan Murray, one of the Iowa's star players from that year who got he's drafted. He's on the Kings now. Yeah, he uh, he's watching Isaiah Brockington dunk. And in the background, you can also see some other Iowa players in awe of the amazing dunk that Isaiah Brockington landed. And then as well, for some historical context, there is Tyrese Hunter when he was on Iowa State <laughs> before he transferred to Texas. <laughs> Boo. But yeah, I think he the, probably assisted on that play too. Yeah, I, I really I just really enjoy the photo just because of how much emotion he's put into it. And just, I don't know, something about it just makes me excited for basketball and just makes me like pumped i mean i don't know this was actually one of my first basketball games i ever photographed so it was kind of crazy to get one of my favorite photos as my first assignments out there that was when i was in in the student section i waited in line for eight hours that day (laughs) and um we um were third row and i brought there was a player on iowa jordan bohan and he seemed like he was there for 10 years and same thing was with a Kansas player from like 2015, Perry Ellis, and I put a um, Jordan or I put Perry Ellis's head on Jordan Bohannon's body and made a sign out of it. It was hilarious. We can insert it, but I remember seeing that. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, waited in the line for like 10 hours for that. Worth it, and um, and we beat him by 20. So yeah, that was a great atmosphere for that game. That that might be the most fun I've had at a Iowa State game as a student. Yeah. This most recent Cy game for basketball, but with men's and women's was uh that was ooh, rough. Little, ooh. But we did beat them more this game than we did than they did last year. True, they yeah. beat us by nineteen. We've been in my twenties. So there we go. That makes up for something. All right, what's your last photo? Okay, so for my last one, I chose another one of Gabe Kalsher. Um, 
at Hilton, they I don't really like it, but they do like kind of what would you call them strobe lights? Yeah, for warm ups. Yeah, they use the LED lights up top and they like make them flash and like move down the. I don't know. I don't really like it. No photographer really does, but I got lucky on this one because the light was shining like perfect on him, and um, I got his the caliber in focus, and I edited it so that um. Like I just brought up a lot of contrast and just boosted the color, I guess. I don't really know, but it turned out super good. Very crisp. Um, yeah, very crisp. Yeah. Um, Was that the 51.2? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the best lens. I mm-hmm. love that lens. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's just waiting to go down the line, high five his teammates and do his handshake with Jeremiah Williams. But um, yeah, he's just in the moment. Um, and I like the addition of the 22 tattoo behind his ear. Um, just super crisp, and I think my favorite shots are the crisp ones, so yeah, that's why I chose that one. Yeah, I think Gabe Kelsher just produces like a lot of good images, because yes. he's like so like emotive with how he plays, and mm-hmm. I don't know, he's got like the cool, calm, collected kind of vibe. He's got good hair. Yeah, he's got good hair. He doesn't sweat nearly as much as Rob Jones. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Shows lot, emotion. Yeah, a lot of my favorite photos from like basketball are of Gabe Kelsher, mm-hmm. and I think... I think that I think it helps that he's a guard too. Yeah, and like he's just always playing too. He's like he started nearly every game mm-hmm. he was here at Iowa State and like I don't know, I think he definitely left his mark here, especially with photos. Like when we have to submit photos for the library for like the history of Iowa State, a lot of them are going to be Gabe Kelsher for basketball this past two seasons. And there's other ones that I want to show, but we're only showing three, but Yeah, like we'll have to catch you on the next podcast. Yeah. All right. I think that will probably be calling it cuz we're about at 35 minutes. So Tyler, have anything else to say before we end this podcast? Go State. Go State. Roll clones. It's been a pleasure, Tyler. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. All right. Hope to catch you guys on the next episode of Lost Lens Caps, your photography podcast here at Iowa State University. I've been Jacob Rice. I'm Tyler Coe. Thanks for watching. See ya.